Praise God, praise God, give him glory, give him glory, hallelujah to his name. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, we just thank you on today, Father God. We give you honor and we give you praise, God. We glorify your name, Father God, no matter what the enemy is doing, what he thinks to do, Father God, we worship you. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We give you honor. Hallelujah. I plead the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus comes against you, Satan. The blood of Jesus comes against you, Satan. The blood of Jesus comes against you, Satan. It's the same blood that rises through our veins. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Give him glory. That's how we're going to win. You're going to win by praying. You're going to win by fasting. You're going to win, said the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care what the enemy is doing. So let me talk talk to you this morning. Praise God. Good morning. Or may I say good afternoon to some of you, my brothers and sisters. God bless you. God keep you. This is the fourth day of the fast. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell y'all right now, the first two or three days, it was hard. I, I'm very transparent. I'm per, I'm like, oh my God, I got to make y'all laugh right quick before I get into this. I was laying down about 1130, I think on the second night, right? And the enemy going to tell me, you know, you got some peanuts over there. It's not really food. I said, devil, you are a liar. You, the food going to tell me that peanuts not food. I said, Lord, have mercy. I just went to sleep. So thank you, Jesus. But I woke up this morning with a surge. I cannot even explain to you. Let me tell y'all what happened last night. And I'm not playing. When I was 27 years old, um, what they started, everybody has a ministry name, especially when you start getting serious. People start understanding the anointing on your life, the calling on your life, the just the fire of God on your life. And just to be honest with you, everybody start calling me fire starter. And what happened is they didn't know that when God really started showing me like supernatural things, I started seeing douses of fire and I didn't understand what it was about, but I understand now it was the fire of the Holy ghost. Well, I'm very transparent on purpose because I want to encourage you. It's not to try to make myself seem like I'm so great, but just to let you know, there's levels to God and the glory is real. The supernatural is real. The dunamis power of God is real. Last night I saw the, that fire again i hadn't seen that fire since i was 27 years old I, i'm gonna say something again since i was 27 years old i did not see that fire i mean i opened my eyes and it was just all over the room just little fires i know it sounds weird but just letting me know <laughs> y'all ain't ready for me something is about to happen on this fast let me tell you something it's not just a fast i know most people are going on it i'm gonna be honest with you just to lose weight uh y'all can't fool me come on somebody hallelujah i'm not saying you don't love the lord but you like you know what i sure could use lose these pounds before thanksgiving and christmas i'm not crazy but i'm gonna tell you right now what you don't understand is you might be made doing it for one reason but <laughs> that spirit of god to get you y'all don't hear what i'm saying there's something about when you are fasting and praying and it's real and even if you playing that you might be playing but the spirit of god never plays come on somebody hallelujah say i'll touch you i'll touch your inner parts come on somebody hallelujah let me walk this thing through so today god wanted me to tell you how important it is to fast. So I have some things that I want to show y'all. We always start off with a scripture. Good morning again. Good afternoon to some of y'all. God bless you. God keep you. It's so important because this is what God says. In these last and evil days, the enemy is using rage. Listen to me very carefully. Rage, fear, and anger. All that stuff going through Facebook. Let me tell you something. Y'all think they just putting that stuff around. Most of that stuff is CIA agents pretending to be just playing people. They are trying to incite a race war and y'all falling for it. I'm telling you, let me tell you something. There is no color in the kingdom of God. So y'all could start dead crap if you want. Y'all could do what y'all want to do. I, everybody's not bad. I don't care what nobody say. Every, every color, every ethnic group have a little bad, come on somebody good and bad and everything. Hallelujah. So, so y'all better, y'all better understand what time it is. So let me walk this thing out. Let me slow it down. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I got a lot of information for you guys. God said that this is how you're going to beat the enemy. Not by anger, not by getting on Facebook, not by cussing, not by trying to incite nobody. That's what the enemy is using. Jesus used the word of God and he humbled himself. I know y'all don't want to hear that because we have a generation. They're doing it. Oh my God. Why y'all think they increased the cursing on the TV? The little kids cursing. Everybody getting angry. They want y'all to have 
have a spirit of lawlessness, said God. But God said you must possess his spirit. You let me tell you how we're gonna beat the kingdom by the power of God. You're not going to do it. In this season, oh come on, somebody, I'm telling you, you're not gonna do it. If you really look from the beginning of God to now to from Genesis to Revelation. Excuse me. Even when Peter tried to cut the um, soldier ear off, God, he healed it. Jesus healed it, right? You can't fight this thing through. And, and that's what the enemy is trying to get you to do. Oh, I got to fight. I got to say how I feel. I got to. No, no, no. The reason that we are not winning, and I'm going to say it like that. The reason why y'all see more evil in this world is because everybody want to take care of itself. You're getting angry. You're getting mad. God says you're full of rage. God says that's not how you got to do it. You got to pray and ask God. Come on, somebody. How did Moses split the red? see come on somebody hallelujah you know how he did that by the power of god he didn't go to pharaoh and slap him he he said you know what he went to him and did just what god said to do what am i saying there's an instructions there's levels to this this is not your battle. Oh, come on, somebody. I feel the power of God. God said that the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord. But how you stand in the battle, that's the thing. You got to do this the way God said do it. So let me, let me slow it down so I can explain to you what thus said the Lord. Come on, somebody. So I'm in is Isaiah 57, 3. I'm sorry, 53, verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Y'all heard that? He say, I'm going to read it again. Isaiah 53, 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Let me tell you what God said. Some of you are talking too much. It's time for praying. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going to walk this thing out today. God said we're, we're talking and getting on Facebook. I mean, everybody want to, y'all know, just talking. Can I challenge you something? I challenge you to start praying. I challenge you to start praying and watch God do that thing. Let me tell you something. I have seen so many miracles. I don't even know what to say. They had this girl one day. And these stories, I tell you, is very true. I dared this girl one day. She was getting ready to start to curse me. And I'm watching her. And I'm waiting on her because you know how you, you know how people love drama. So you could tell it was orchestrated. I'm waiting on her, right? And I'm gonna tell you the truth. I wasn't scared because y'all know my y'all know my nature. But I never forget I heard God say, Deanna, I know you used to be whatever. He said, But don't you dare. He said, Let me handle this. And I was like, God, I'm sitting up there waiting, you know, like God, she touched me. I'm just gonna be real with you. This is way before I was saved. I said, God, she touched me. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you what time and you know, I'm telling God, right? Let me tell you what ended up happening. Before I could even think to do anything, soon as she came to the door, she started to curse me out. And this is what God did. And I'm not kidding. I'm going to, I'm going to try to do it. It's going to sound crazy. She did. La, 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 la. She could not even talk. God confounded her language. I'm watching her. She got scared and ran from the door. I, I got scared. I was like, God, what is that? He said, I confused her language. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. What's happening is most people don't believe in the power of God because you haven't given him time to work. The enemy got everybody in, in, in a rush, in a rush. You got to say what you want to say. You got to do what you got to do. You got to get mad. You got to try to act. You got to try to do vengeance. You got to try to say something. You got to try to get on Facebook. You got to try to do drama. You, all this old crazy stuff that Jesus never did. As a matter of fact, there were times when Jesus was before the Pharisees and Sadducees and they was trying him. And what did he do? He just was there. He just bent down and wrote in dirt. Y'all don't understand. And then he said, I only speak what I hear my father say. I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you this morning or this afternoon. It's time for you to speak only when God says to speak. In Galatians, it says, in Galatians, it says, um, no, uh, have your speech seasoned with salt. Chapter three, have your speech seasoned with salt. So you know how to answer each man, said the Lord. But I'm going to walk this thing out. I want y'all to listen to something right quick. So I got a maneuver here. Okay. Y'all just bear with me. I wanted to just show you this. This is my mentor. I love this man. I miss him. Dr. Miles Monroe. Fasting for 21 days from January 9th to January 30th. 21 days. This is how you look when you haven't eaten any food at all for 21 days. No food. My wife, no food. You just drink water, herbal tea complete fast. You don't die. 
So you wonder why I'm so anointed. You wonder why there's such power when I get up to speak. There's a price you pay. Y'all heard that? It's a price you pay. Nobody want to pay a price. You wonder why I have such an understanding of the kingdom. How bad do you want to know God? I heard Americans go on a fast and they say, I fasted for a day. You didn't fast. You missed a meal. Christ fasted 40 days. Moses fasted 40 days in the mountain. Elijah fasted 40 days. You, 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 you can't get some things done without fasting. There's some things you cannot get done without fasting, I'm telling you. The disciples loved God. They followed Jesus. They believed his teaching. And they ran into a little demon-possessed boy. And they couldn't cast the demon out. They loved God. They followed Jesus. And they obeyed his scriptures, his words. But they still couldn't cast the demon out. They pray, just like you pray. Come out in Jesus' name. I bring all that stuff. The demon says, no, I'm not coming out. Because I'm a different kind of spirit. I need more than what you're doing. Prayer can't get me out. And the demon never left. Christ, leaving the mountain, coming down the mountain after fasting, met them, and he says, what's going on? The whole city was confused. And a man came to Christ and said, I, I brought my boy to you, to your disciples, and they couldn't cast the demon out. And Christ didn't cast the demon out first. He first turned to them. And he said, how long must I be with you? He rebuked them. There's some things you want God to do, but you ain't willing to pay a price. I'm not telling you I'm fasting because I want you to think I'm impressing you. I wanted to show you what 21 days of food looks like because most of the people I meet in the church, when they fast for two days, they think they're going to die. That's a lie. If you can't overcome the power of your belly, how can you overcome the power of a demon? So Jesus turned to the man and said, bring the boy to me. And then he cast the demon out in one word. And he gave the boy back to his father. The disciples were ashamed and quiet. Because they were publicly embarrassed. The Bible said later that day they were at a meal eating. And they were so afraid to talk to him. And one of them built up the courage. His name was Peter. And Peter said, Master, uh, that incident today, why couldn't we cast that demon out? And Christ quickly answered him. He said, oh, son. That kind doesn't come out except by prayer, which is what you guys did, and fasting, which you didn't do. There's some things you're trying to change in your situation in your life. You've been praying for weeks and months and years. God is saying this kind doesn't change without pushing away the plate. Because the spirit world is a spiritual world. And fasting increases your capacity to receive spiritual power. It's like a pipe. Food is like gunk in a pipe. The more you eat, the smaller the hole gets. The spirit still flows through you, but very restricted. Fasting is like, it's like Drano. Flushing out all the distractions and all the inhibitions. It, it makes you solely, completely open to God. That's why the first act of Jesus was fasting. Make a decision this year to pay a price. That's why God could trust me with the whole government. He could trust me to change and train prime ministers because when I sit with them, I need to have direct Access from God. 
So I have to be completely spiritually in tune. Because I'm about to do, advise someone who's going to make policy for a country. Perhaps the church in the Western world is eating itself to death. Powerless church. Tonight, right now, tonight, right now, at this moment, we got over 500 people praying on the fast. Some of them are 80 years old, 70 years old. Some of them are 16 years old. My son, 27, is fasting with us right now. When your teenagers fast, can you imagine the power in the youth department? Our youth ministry is the most powerful youth ministry in our country. To pay price. By the way, fasting keeps you healthy, doesn't it? It's a benefit. You, you know, you keep your weight off. And you keep your heart right. And you keep your blood clean. Just side benefits of obeying God. And Christ never said, if you fast. He said, when you fast, you must do it before God. When, not if, when. In other words, he expects you to do it. Some of you have never fasted. And it's a command from the king to fast. Praise God. So, I challenge you this year, start. Do it. Get to know God in a way you never can on a full stomach. Sacrifice. Praise God. Okay, everybody. So this is what I want to tell you. This is why we have to fast. Look what they're doing. The world's largest Uji board. You know, they're summoning the world's largest spirits. Look at this. Look at this crowd. Look at this stuff. Y'all think this again, but I want to show y'all and, and, and people not understanding they calling themselves the demon dog, but that picture also look like Alex Crowley. Y'all ain't ready for me. Look, and, and then notice they have half of the picture. Y'all don't understand what's happening here, huh? So how can we defeat these evil, evil spirits? Hold on, I want to show y'all what they talking about. The states American are getting vaccinated. Look at this. L look at this. Mississippi, 51%. They trying to make everybody get vaccinated. Y'all know what they really doing, right? Look at this. Look at the percentage. I say all that to say, my God, my God, if we don't, if we don't start taking it seriously. And I'm, I'm talking, let me tell you something. I'm speaking to myself first. It's so important. As a matter of fact, I'm going here. I'm going to be very transparent because y'all need this. Um, when I first started out at 27 years old, I realized, honestly, there was a certain power in me, even when I was in California. I don't know if it's because of what I went through for the last five, four years, maybe several years, just to be honest with you. Something happened because um, I just didn't feel it like I used to feel have it. And, and I'm just being real. Man, I'm not trying to brag. I think it was a conference in 2015. One of the students said, I'm going to be very transparent on purpose. She called me. She said, Apostle, she said, I'm not trying to disrespect you. And then she said, but when I met you at the Atlanta conference, she said, you have fire in your eyes. And I remember everybody said that. I mean, it was it was so powerful. I can't even explain to you. I'm not trying to glorify myself. I'm going somewhere with this. And what she never know is that I was on the other side of the phone crying because I knew something had happened. And I prayed that day. This was like maybe last year, just to be honest with you. I said, God, I repent. I said, I allow trials, tests, tribulation, even people to get me upset to where I got out of the anointing that I know you have over my life. I'm saying something to y'all. I'm getting it back and I can feel it. When I saw that fire last night, I knew what time it was. You know what I'm saying? There are times when you're going to go through your ups and downs, tests and trials, don't be moved by people. Don't be moved by tests. Don't be moved by tribulations. Get back close to your God. Go ahead, repent. Say, God, I repent. I know that there's more in me. I know that you have more for me. I know that you have ordained me for more. I know you've anointed me for more. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 
It's process. That's what it is. It's process. And process brings problems. Come on, somebody. But you got to mature in the problems. You can't run away. You can't get mad at people. You can't get on Facebook, start tripping. No, you got to go into the secret place. God, God, give me the strength. Give me the maturity. Give me the wisdom. Give me the discernment. Give me the love. Give me the joy. Don't let me allow my problems and situations to change my attitude and anointing. I just said something. I just said something. That's how important it is to stay in that word. But everybody, to be honest with you, they got everybody trying to be the greatest. Oh, yeah, you got to get your platform. You got to build your brand. What the heck? We building up on another man's foundation. It's on the Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We got to go back to the oracles of God. That's why people are so cold. You notice the Bible says in the last days that they love what's cold for each other. You know why? Because everybody trying to everybody trying to get that bag. Everybody trying to be the best. They want it's, it's like a greedy spirit. It ain't like it is a greedy spirit. Don't want to help nobody no more. Talk about each other like a dog. Ugly to each other. Don't even love your own family. Jealous. I go back to that jealousy spirit. I don't know about you, but I decree and declare. I'm getting myself ready for 2020. I repent to God. I know there's more in me. If I ever, and and I'm going to publicly be the first one to do, if I ever hurt anybody, anybody saying or doing anything throughout my years of hurting, because hurt people hurt people. I repent to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I meant no harm. Now, if it was a thus said the Lord, you know what to do with that. You got to go to God. Hallelujah. But it's time for us to come back to the oracles of God and do our first work over again and be who God have called us to be. Not the person that people want us to be, not that we think we want to be, but God, who do you say I am? God, help me. If you don't know how to do it, say, God, help me process. God, keep me through the process. Hallelujah. This stuff real. This ain't no game. This is not about accolades. It's not about people. It's about you and God. Because on the day of judgment, and it will be one whether you like it or not, He's going. you're going to have to stand before the king by yourself. Not your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your friend, your lover, your wife, your husband. But you said the Lord. Hallelujah. You and your God. So I suggest... We all get it together because people dying out there because the church sitting up there. Notice the Bible says that Jesus said a house divided against itself cannot stand. Y'all don't see the division and demons. They work together real good. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Why is it that you're jealous of your brother and your sister? Everybody has a calling. And let me tell you something. What God have called you to do, ain't nobody could beat you doing it but you because that's your assignment. And God didn't assign another. So you don't even have to be jealous. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to rebuke those evil thoughts about each other. Come on, somebody. He's the whisperer. I'm going to tell you again. He's the whisperer. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. And I pray that we start Praying right now for next year. Be a better person. Challenge yourself. See, quit looking at other people. Challenge yourself to be better in areas that you know you should be. Because we all got some stuff. Remember I said it yesterday. We doing and dealing. You're being doing ministry and dealing with some stuff. Hallelujah. So God bless you. I love you all through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for you all. We only got one enemy, man. You could say you could sit up there. We don't always agree. We don't always like each other. And what I mean by that is the way each other operate. But at the end of the day, we brothers and sisters, whether you like it or not. And we got to get past all that that simple stuff. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. And this is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll our soldiers for that is who we are. Children of the living God. God bless.